And now that the deck has been sealed, the next step is to take our 1208 fiberglass and do two runs across it. One with a six inch size to cover. Sorry, I'll have to calculate to millimeters. 150. 150 millimeters. And then the next one is a 100 millimeter. I should know, I just cut this yesterday. Yeah. If you can't. If you can't tell, we've actually already done a round of this on the other side because you can see the outline of the mass on both of our noses. Um, that was a little bit easier because there, the way the flange was, it butted right up against the core, so it didn't need as much filling. Um, that's why we didn't really fill it or film it because it wasn't as dramatic, dramatic or noticeable the difference as what this side will be. For this, we have a big gap that we actually need to fill. So, yep, that's part of the process. After eight years of the nomadic life, involving crossing oceans in a 34-foot saber, refitting an aluminum boat, and then taking that to the Arctic Circle, we're back at it again with a brand new build. This is Matt, and I'm Jessica. Make sure to hit the subscribe button and join us every week as we start our newest project of building a 42-foot catamaran from the ground up. My task right now is to mix up a batch of resin. I'm also going to add to it the cotton flock and silica to kind of get it nice and thick, get it to stay adhere to the surface. Like Matt said, we're gonna create a ramp to fill in this gap and just create like a nice smooth transition there. And then we add our fiberglass and peel ply. That guy is silica. step Matt and I are doing after he went through with the styrene prep for the surface is we're going through with this thickened resin and we're filling any of the holes from the screws that we did for the cleats to pull the two sides together and we're also kind of trying to fill that little part where any excess of the methylcrylate did not squeeze out so that, that is fully bonded and then after that we'll go through and make that ramp. Step one complete, we've got all of the gaps filled, all of the drill screw holes filled, and now it's time to <laughs> take the excess and start making that ramp in. It's so funny how fast this resin is starting to cure or like kick already. It doesn't even take that much temperature. A little worried about summer. Time to call on the big dog now. Stripper, it was bending in too much, the problem. So I was getting it a lot. So you can see it kind of dip in. Now it's flat. Yep. As you can tell, we've got a pretty big trough to fill there. Matt's doing a really good job of getting it even right now, but Unfortunately, that does mean a lot of resin and thickener mix, so that's probably going to be my job because as soon as I can make it, Matt's going to be going through it. And now I have to mix up another eight ounces, which hopefully get Matt to the top. So. Okay, so what we have done right now is we've done 32 ounces of resin mixed with filler. Uh, Jess has to do another eight, so we're gonna be at 40 ounces. 
And we were just talking about it, and we actually figured out what would have been the smart thing had we been on our game was to cut strips of extra foam that we have of core and actually fill in that little gap with those, bond those into place, round them off, and then just bond the fiberglass directly to that. It would have saved weight and we would have saved a lot of extra resin, um, 40 ounces of resin, would have saved at least some of that with that process. It would have been kind of cool to play with too, but uh, nonetheless, well, I guess we're almost done. And my muscles are getting a workout with non-stop stirring. <laughs> Are your spidey senses tingling? Why? Is there a spider behind me? No, it's because you're balancing on this little corner. Oh. Yeah, they scared there. No little spiders today. It looks like just as when we were bonding the inner hull pieces with the 1208 fiberglass, it's going to be another late night of working after dark. I just went to do a test with my finger against the filler that we put in a little bit ago and not kicking as fast as the other side, but of course it's getting into late evening now. It's getting a lot cooler inside the tent. And so we might actually have the chance to run back to the Viking and make dinner and then we'll come back here and do it. So, oh my gosh, thank goodness for these lights because otherwise we'd just be absolutely screwed. Because we were using 1208 fiberglass once more for this project, it required us covering the chop strand portion, its backside, on our wedding table. Even though we still give everything a good coating once it is set in place, this ensures that both sides will be fully saturated. Between the two of us, we unrolled the 12 away across the bridge deck joint, making sure to keep the center of this 150 mm cloth right over the seam that had just been coved. Matt would coat the top of it with more resin, the motion of pressing in with his roller would help to smooth the cloth as well as remove the larger air bubbles. Because there were still many smaller air bubbles trapped in there, that is where I stepped in with a fin or metal roller to help eliminate any other air that could be trapped under the fiberglass. The same process of wetting was done for our 100 millimeter wide cloth which was then brought to the bridge deck to lay over the center of the 150 millimeter cloth that had just gone down. The last step of the process was to apply peel ply. This is a polyester fabric that makes for a smooth and fair surface as well as works out more of the air bubbles. Because we're working in vinyl luster instead of epoxy, we only need to use this product in areas where we are looking to leave behind a smooth surface. Many builders that work in epoxy will use it because it helps to pull off the blush which is left behind when epoxy cures. Vinyl luster does not have this blush when curing so we don't need to use it for that purpose. So you can see we, we actually waited just a little bit too long. Um, now you can see a ridge right across here where it has made a little bit of an air bubble. Mm -hmm. um, what that is is just it was something that was actually in the fairing when I laid it down just a little bit rough of a surface right there and now it's following that contour because it has hardened up. Had we hit it probably another 20 minutes ago, it would have been soft enough that I could kind of smooth that out as I'm laying down the glass. So, mm, it's just, it, it, it's difficult because the temperature is changing so much and we keep changing the percentage of the peroxide in this, um, trying to adjust and it's the variance in how much time we have is huge. Um, and we're just not used to it yet. So by the end of this, we'll be perfect at it. Right now, we're still learning the ropes.
gosh, it feels so good to get that mask off my face. I think we've been in here for nine hours today working on both sides of the bridge deck, but it feels like a major accomplishment because now they are glassed in and they already are starting to feel so much more rigid, which is just amazing. Again, we actually have a catamaran now, which is so cool. On the starboard side of the hull here that we did before dinner, everything has cured. Matt started to take a little bit of the peel pull off, but I'm not gonna let him have all the fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest off now. Ooh. Almost as satisfying as the lower app. Live. <laughs> I just realized I should have taken off my gloves. Is it still a little sticky? <laughs> Oh, uh, we might not want to take too much then. Okay. It's almost 11 o'clock at night. I need a little punch drug here. Yeah. I think we'll leave the rest for morning. Ugh. It's still a little sticky. Yeah, it's still a little tacky, but... So we may have jumped the gun a little bit in thinking that this side was completely done. Apparently it's just the back half, so we'll come back in the morning to take off both sides. But a very successful day of work here in the tent, and I'm gonna go have that evening now that I set aside for dinner because we had to rush through and get back here. So it's time to call it a night and just relax. We are just keeping ourselves on a roll now with work because a few of the projects we did have to have extra sets of hands. And even though Matt and I can usually find things to fill our days, it was one of those like, okay, like this weekend when people are available, we're gonna bond the hull, but now that's done. Matt and I spent yesterday doing the seams with the fiberglass. So we're just gonna keep on going. And today we're taking out these forms, which means that we can then lift up the hull sides and level out the deck because once that is 100% level, we'll apply the unidirectional tape and then there's no moving that. So pretty important step, but we're just gonna keep pushing forward. Get ready for that next container to come in like a month. Uh, um, probably gonna need dust mass for this. Hmm. It is covered in gel coat dust <laughs> and sanding dust though. Going for full face protection, protect our noses, mouth, and eyes. Because it is dusty. Got so, tired of using the ratchet for that. So, broke out this. Rusty bits, rusty uh, sockets, and rusty uh, open end wrench. <laughs> Well, you know, pretty much everything else we have is new, so. Yep. That's okay. Yep. Yep. Not getting those back. Now we have all of these side supports down again, so you can see there's nothing really keeping that in place other than the few bolts we have and the attachment points we still have to blocks attached to these poles here. So the question we're going to figure out is exactly how high we want to get it to be able to do like the grinding and the prep and um, yeah, just kind of get it ready to then lower back down when we're ready. Oh, and we also want to get the bulkheads in before this goes down. So. Need to make sure those go in. And so I guess we're gonna just do a little bit of calculating to figure out where these are gonna get raised to. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see, Matt has now gone along and not only raised the position where the uh, block is on this one, but he went through on this to raise it and also center it from where the lift point is because before it was just kind of sitting on one of the two beams which wanted to like lift it forward or lift it back. But now we have got them attached to the come-alongs and there's just enough tension on there. And anyone that's seen this for the first time, uh, this hull side panel is not that heavy. It weighs probably 300, 320 something pounds. Um, it's just awkward. It's very, very difficult for us to lift by ourselves because it's 40 feet long. Um, so that's, there isn't a ton of stress on these points. Just to make sure everyone knows, not a lot of stress. <laughs> So at the moment, we still have two bolts holding it in place, one at the forward end there, one at the aft end there. And so we're going to undo those bolts and then come back. It should be supported by the blocks at that point, but then we can use the come alongs, kind of like crank it up on each side and get it lifted just the amount that we need to. Again, this first attempt may not be where it sits um, permanently, but it will just give us a good idea of what happens when we do that instead of going like all the way up. Since there is a lot of tension on the hull right now, we want to be able to control what happens to it once we take this bolt out. So Matt's just gone ahead and put a C-clamp on so we can still keep the two pieces together once the bolt has been removed. Maybe. Maybe. It almost seems like it's trying to go up, which makes no sense because there isn't that much tension on it. Yeah, why not? Alright, so that's gonna prevent that from swinging that way. To the unbolting process. So we need to get that. One side is almost complete now. As you can see, it is fully raised and there is a little bit of tweaking. So we had to turn the cameras off as we we're running back and forth because they were just kind of getting in the way. But since the bottom had wanted to come out toward us, but we really wanted it to sit as upright as possible, Matt has added a ratchet. You can kind of see it right there. So that's pulling the bottom in and right now we still have it supported by the uh, two come-alongs on each attachment point there. But if you can see, there's also blocks attached to the red rope. So Matt is going through right now and tightening those, so that's gonna be holding the load. And once those are tensioned, we can take off the come-alongs and go work on side number two. Hi there everyone. Before we end this episode, I want to give a big shout out to all of our patrons because of course without their help, there is no way that we could be doing this catamaran build right now. So one of our new Patreon benefits to say thank you is, as you can see on the wall behind me, is to display all of our patrons' names. And because this is in one of our forward bulkheads, I'm actually standing between bulkhead two and three right now. This is an area that it's never going to get covered, painted. These names will be here forever. So as we go through, we're gonna continue to add our existing patrons and our new patrons will put you on there too. But right now I wanna give a shout out to a few of our um, bigger supporters. This wall has, I think, our first 30 patrons. They've been with us since we were in the workyard in Indian Town, so the fact that we still have them here is amazing. 
Jeff and Cam Bach got us this place here in Annapolis. They're the ones that invited us, got us hooked up at Kent War Marina for this amazing space that we're doing the building in. SV Lebenskunkt is actually a somewhat newer one, but he needed to go on first because that is the new owner of Elements. So of course, without having him purchase that, but we couldn't have moved on to where we are now. Robert Ash pretty much covered all of our finances to be in the workyard in Indian Town. And so, yes, of course, we've got an amazing group of people so far. We're gonna keep adding to it. And if you want to find out how to get your name up on these walls as well, make sure to visit our Patreon page with the link down in the description box below. Japan.